so God was turning it into a ministry. So when I wasn't traveling on the road with my models, when I could work it out in my schedule, I would go and um, I'd go to these churches and, and, and talk on creation. And as I'd build my models too, I'd often go to museums and, and I'd measure the bones that the museums would let me get into and do that part of it and, and take measurements and drawings of these dinosaur skeletons so I could make my models be realistic looking. And, um, and so I, I was doing that and I noticed that no matter what museum we go to, bar none, God wasn't even mentioned. It wasn't even an option. God's completely erased out of the picture. And, and Kay and I, we got tired of that. And Kay and I decided that we would like to take our dinosaurs and, and start a creation museum of our own. Because, uh, you know, at Henpeck is not the place to do it. Not that many people. But we really did get tired of going to the museums. And, and Kay and I, we just decided it's high time that we as Christians stand toe to toe against the devil and take back the glory of creation that he stole from Jesus Christ our creator and give it back to our Lord, the one who deserves it in the first place. Right. We wanted to see our dinosaurs used in that capacity. Well, it happens to be just about that time, uh, Answers in Genesis was just starting as a ministry. And, uh, and I knew that they moved to Kentucky, which is just really in my back door. And, um, and I told Kay, I said, wouldn't it be nice if I could meet Ken Ham and show him the dinosaurs that I sculptured, maybe they could be used in the Creation Museum. Now, I've read some of Ken's books and, and got some of that literature that they, they had before, and, and, uh, and it had helped me and, uh, uh, to be able to defend my faith. So it just happens to be, again, God orchestrated for, for Answers in Genesis, they were a fairly new organization at that time, was doing a seminar in Mount Vernon, Ohio, which is not too far from where I live, about 20 minutes from where my, my, my farm is. And so I told Kay, I said, I'm going to go and, and, um, to the seminar and, and introduce myself to Ken if I get a chance. So during the book break, that's what I did. I walked up front and told him that I was Buddy Davis and that I sculptured life-size dinosaurs. I said, after the, uh, the seminar's over, would you like to come to my house and see the dinosaurs? I, I didn't think he'd do it. I really didn't, because I know, I guarantee you how well I know these days with all the traveling that I do, when you're done with a seminar, what you want to do is go back to your room and crash, or if you can get on an airplane and go home, that's what you want to do, go home. And to my surprise, Ken says, yeah, mate, you know, Ken's from Australia, so he says, yeah, mate, he says, I'd love to see your dinosaurs. He says, do you care if I bring along uh, Dr. Gary Parker and his wife, Mary, and Mike Zovat and, and Mark Loy, so you can imagine the surprise on my wife's face when I said, hey, honey, guess we'll bring them home for dinner. <laughs> so anyway, uh, brought Ken uh, in, into to the house after the seminar, and I think we fed them Sloppy Joe sandwich or something, something Kay could fix up real fast, and we gave them some Coca-Cola. And then I took Ken up to my barn. At that time, I was building my dinosaurs in a big red barn. I used to keep horses and cattle in that barn, and I keep uh, dinosaurs in that barn. You know, my barn is an interesting place for some drifter on some cold winter's night. <laughs> anyway, I took Ken up to see the dinosaurs, and uh, his eyes just kind of got big, you know, they're, they're, they're professionally sculptured, not because I do it. I, I guarantee you that I, I'm not up here bragging because I know that God can raise stones and do anything that I do, so I'm not telling you that for that. But I try to do the best work that I can. I don't care if I'm doing a children's workshop or if I'm up here saying, I'm going to do the best with, with what God has given me to do, no matter if it's building dinosaurs, tax or whatever it is, I think that we, we should, should try to do our best job always. And so my dinosaurs are professionally sculptured. And Ken sees the dinosaurs and he sees, wow, I see how these can be used as a hook to help draw people into the museum. You see, the museum is going to be much more than just dinosaurs. It's about the authority of Scripture. Can you trust God's Word? And that certainly encompasses a lot more than just my dinosaurs. But the dinosaurs can be used as a hook to help get people there. I mean, uh, let's face it, there's some people you could not blow into church with a stick of dynamite. But if they say, hey, what about this creation museum? I hear that they got these dinosaurs there. Uh, let's take the kids and, and, and see. Hopefully, they'll go through that museum and they're going to learn ways that they can defend their faith. They can see that there is a reason for the hope that is placed within us. And they'll see that there are other answers. I can see nothing wrong with giving people an alternative and show them how to think instead of what to think. And, and that's what the museum's going to be, uh, to show people how they can defend their faith logically. And so Ken sees the dinosaurs and really likes them. So anyway, we go back down to my log cabin 
And he's talking about uh, with, with the rest of the people that he brought, how they might be able to incorporate my models uh, with, with the dinosaurs. And he spies my guitar in the corner. And he says, hey, buddy, he says, uh, what kind of music do you do on your guitar? And I, and I was kind of embarrassed to tell him. And he says, well, I like that kind of music. He says, uh, he says, uh, he says play me a song. I just about died. But I, I wasn't, I, I wasn't practiced up. I mean, I, I basically give up on music. I hung the guitar up for years. And, you know, I get it out and play a song, of course, here and there. But I, I quit thinking that I was going to be able to do it as a career. And, and, uh, and so I didn't want to do it. I thought he's going to hate my kind of music. So anyway, I played him, I played him this song. And it's called He Makes Dreams Out of Nothing. And when it finished, Ken says, I really like that song. But he says, we ought to get Buddy to sing that song when the museum opens up. You know, about that time they needed to throw water in my face because I wasn't used to anybody like right when I did. And, 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 uh, and so uh, it, it, it amazed me. God was answering a prayer right then and there that took 32 years for it to be answered. You see, he grew me all those times from the time I was a teenager, moving to Nashville, learning how to stand up in front of people and talk, and then learning how to sculpture dinosaurs and turning the dinosaurs into a ministry. And it, 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 it just amazed me that God brings this guy all the way from Australia, all the way to America, then all the way to, uh, to Ohio, then all the way to Mount Vernon, then all the way into my living room, that night is getting ready to answer a prayer that a boy had when he's 14 or 15 years old, and I didn't even know God was open that night. And, 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 and now I'm singing all over the world. I mean, I go to places like uh, Australia, and boys and girls know my music. Boy, I tell you what, it's exciting to me. It really is. I go to England. I, we, we were in England, and, um, and there was a, a Sunday school crew, a group that, that come to see me. And, and I mean, they don't know who I am in Hentac, you know, but here I am curled over in, in England, and these boys will say, hey, buddy, we're your biggest fans. And, and, the, and the Sunday school teacher says, play, play, buddy, one of these songs. And they stood out there just off the pillow and started and sang one of my songs. So I took my guitar out of the case, couldn't get in church, it was locked. So I played along with them. We drew a crowd before we ever got into the church. And, and, then, and then I thought it'd be really cool. I, I, I invited the boys and girls in that church uh, uh, when, when it time for me to sing to come up, and they, they signed my songs. I don't even know the signs to my songs. And it didn't matter if I wrote the song, they knew it. And they knew it. And I give up on it. And God worked. So I say you don't quit. Quitting is not even an option. I realize that sometimes God will answer a prayer as no, because he knows what's best. But I think many times we just turn our back and say, well, it's not going to work for me, and we walk away. And we need not do that. I, I know uh, a few years ago we were working uh, in a, near near Nashville, and um, we was at a, a church uh, where, where Ricky Skaggs goes. You all know who Ricky Skaggs is? Great artist. He won several Grammys. You know, and I'm kind of just big eye. You know, see this guy. I love his mandolin playing and stuff, and I'm a big fan of, of Ricky Skaggs. And, and I see Ricky Skaggs uh, talking to Ken because uh, Ricky actually uh, uh, supports Answers in Genesis. Uh, and so Ken and, and Ricky Skaggs were talking together, and, and I'm just kind of standing there, you know, by them, and, and I, I'll never forget this. There are two teenagers that come up from the audience, and they wanted my autograph. <laughs> and I never let Ken forget. <laughs> oh, I could go on and on, but the thing is, 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 is you don't quit praying. It's, it's, uh, it's something that you just don't do. And God answers prayer. He really does. So this is not a great song. None of my songs are. They're just three chord songs, and but I, I write them with my heart, and I mean what I say. So I play you a song, and I hope that it will minister to you.